Doug Sims live in the studio today with some special guests, Miss Jane Jones and Rachel Parker. Hey. 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 <laughs> hey, friends. What's going on, ladies? How are you? We're good. Or let, I'll let Jane speak for herself. I'm doing great. <laughs> it's good. It's good. A little cold, but we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This. Um, it's cold outside. It's cold in the building as well, but it's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. And matter of fact, give me just a little bit of background about yourself, Ms. Uh, Rachel. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Parker. I am a Michigan native mother of four uh, currently in property management, transitioning, hopefully to full time acting. I've been a fitness instructor. I'm a fitness enthusiast for sure. And a lover of food and travel. Awesome. Ms. Jane. I am actually from Wisconsin, but grew up in, I know, Wisconsin, right? Go Pack Go. Sorry, guys. (laughs) I know, shut it down, right? Uh. (laughs) Um, And I am currently a full-time real estate agent in the West Michigan area. So just serving families in our area. And I'm a lover of dogs. I have two rescue dogs that I absolutely love. Married. And that's pretty much me in a bottle. All right, you guys, keep it locked right here. We'll get into some conversations um, with Miss Rachel and Miss Jane. Keep it locked right here. Doug Sims Live. <laughs> Doug Sims Live in the studio with Miss Rachel Parker and Jane Jones. Yeah. And what's going on in yeah. the world of music? Oh, there's a lot. Of, <laughs> there's a lot the of juicy. Tea is boiling. <laughs> we got the beef between. You want to call it beef? Yeah, it's beef. Okay. It's beef. It's we real got beef. Rat beef. Classic rap beef, Dicky Minaj versus Meg The Stallion. Meg The Stallion. Well, Come tell me about other. it, cause I need to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think it it she put she put the track out and she's talking a lot about everyone, but she's not saying any names. You talking about Meg? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely her kind of like I'm coming out on my own kind of piece, the emancipation of Mimi style, and she's growing. She's in her journey, she's trying to get back into her bag and really addressing her haters. But I think she did it classy. What do you think? Well, I think, yes, she ruffled a lot of feathers and Nicki Minaj already came out with her own diss track. Okay, so are there two diss tracks going around? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, Megan's is a broad one. Okay. And then Nicki's is very specific. I think first line drop, she's dropping a name. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to have to put this in rotation. I need to find this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find it. So are there any are there any specific lines that people can relate to? On There's the, uh, definitely a line. What's the first line you got, Rachel? Um, for Nikki, this little begging, talking about Megan's law for a free beat, you can do something with Megan Raw. And then it's just about if you're a ghostwriter party, it, it's really going in hard on Megan. Uh, Nikki really isn't addressing anything about anybody else that... Meg has allegedly stated because again Meg hasn't dropped any names okay so I have a question with you guys are you guys Nikki fans Ooh, I am um, you know I I do love Nikki's music but I also love Meg the Stallion I love the new energy that she brings okay so my I've always wondered does Nikki actually write her own lyrics of course she said, of course. <laughs> I think I think she has some help sometimes. I don't think she writes all of it. Okay, I wouldn't doubt that. There's probably some help, but from hardcore, old school Nikki days, you know that she wrote her yeah. stuff. Okay. For sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So Meg, her, some of her lyrics. Let's go over it. Let's see. Don't speak on my body count if the dick ain't worth coming back for seconds. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't about us. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. And she said also, what did she say? These hate on BBLs and be walking around with the same scars. Okay. So I've heard a lot about this lyric. Who do you think they're talking about? Allegedly, she was talking about Drake. Mm-hmm. But why? Why do we think has Drake said something about BBLs? Does or... he have a BBL? Oh, stop it! <laughs> oh. Or the opposite of one? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like his TikTok name ain't BBL Drake. 
I mean, he did get that body pretty quickly. Well, you don't believe yeah. it was in the gym? But that's funny because also Nikki is accusing Meg of having a little lipo herself. So, I mean, what do we know? I mean, BBLs are a thing. (laughs) Not that Meg got a BBL. So I will will at least defend on that. But at least that she got a little bit of lipo to help her along. And now she's on the fitness journey like we see so many people and influencers do get surgery and then start promoting like they did the work themselves. Yeah. So so what do you guys think about that? Do you think... um the people i think they should just hit the gym first of all without going through the surgery and all of that so but this is hollywood and it's the entertainment industry and they go for the quickest thing first Mm -hmm. now that tends to hurt them in the long run when you do all that crazy surgery Mm -hmm. i'd rather see them go in the gym but they don't want to put in the work even though this is just in general even though people put the work in in their careers and whatever Mm -hmm. they're trying to do but when it comes to maintaining that tempo if you will Mm -hmm. they're reluctant to put the work in but i think you know because since you're in the spotlight so much you got to be quick about it they want to see instant results you know our society is an instant ramen type of (laughs) (laughs) society they want to see they want to see fast results yeah but you know what i think i think they could get it in a year if they had because they have trainers they have access to it they have access to it they got the money for it exactly so I think they could do it, but like you said, they want it instantaneously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's the shortcut, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know. So I mean, you know, I got to work out somehow. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to get cut up. I, yes. Us. Yep. I got to earn us. that body. Yeah. Not just through funds. It feels so much better when it's earned, though. So just to be clear, Miss Jane has insulted us by <laughs> stating <laughs> she don't. She she's not. A, she's not for the lions. I am not, you guys, because I rep where I'm from, not where I live. I am a true Packers fan. So she has on some uh, nice pair of shoes. She may be <laughs> uh, walking back. But anyway, we're going to talk about the Lions for a hot minute. So the, the Lions had the victory in hand, if you will. They did. They had it in hand. And somehow, so mistakes on the catches. Mm-hmm. Downfield, center of the field, missing the passes, yeah. missing the touchdown mm-hmm. that was in his hands. Just boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, down the field when when the guy caught the ball off the bounce off the, off off the, the helmet. I mean, can we admit that that was kind of dope though? It, I was, it was nice. <laughs> okay, it was okay. a good play. Back it was good lines. concentration. Yes. yes, yes. It was. I will was, admit the skill on that. That's it. It was great concentration, but to but to lose a seventeen point lead. You know that's tough. That is that tough. hurts. Now, now you're a sports fan. You're on Bleacher Report and all that. I am. That great stuff. <laughs> I am. What's going? You know what? This game that's coming up. I'm not even really interested in it. Why not? I'll watch it, but I'm not interested in it. Okay. You Just because you lost. <laughs> And you're gonna so live in that. You, you know what? She <laughs> she's going in on, on the low low, but <laughs> just it's it's it, it's a rivalry that already took place, mm-hmm. right? The two teams. I'm just like, uh, you tired I, of the Chiefs? I'm, 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 t- I'm tired of both of them. Really? Mm-hmm. You know, I have no stronghold to either one of them. No affiliation to either one of. Them. Although we do have, which is funny, we do have two guys from Muskegon. One is a player who's playing for. San Francisco. Okay. okay. The other one is a trainer who's training for Kansas City. Amazing. Yeah. Congratulations to that. Invested. Right. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. So you okay. still can be invested just, in that. Just a little bit. That's it. So, so, what's up with this this Taylor fandomonium, if you will? It's you know it's been going crazy since they came out that they were dating. So, according to Bleacher Report, it states that. Three hundred thirty-one point five million equivalent brand value Taylor Swift has generated for the NFL and the Chiefs. Really? All for having a relationship with us. Wow. Is the NFL rigged? So Ooh. it is rigged. Let me tell you what. Here's a thought. Here's a here's a thought. Ticket prices. Ooh. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine hundred. Somewhere around that. Oh that's the goodness. lowest. Oh. That's nosebleeds. Yes, definitely. That is the lowest. For around eighty nine to ninety one hundred for the nosebleed section. That's you still got to book a flight. 
So where is that where you're caring about your fan base? Because generally, let's think about Kansas. Uh, most people aren't going to be the millionaires that are buying your tickets. So Kansas, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I they took know. out a loan, mortgage the crib, whatever. <laughs> they did something. Why? Because it's going to be packed, I'm sure. It's going to be packed. And I think for one reason, Taylor Swift, of Who? course. Taylor Swift. Okay. They they coming out to see her regardless. Okay. They're coming. They're, I, they're I Swifties. I don't get it. They're Swifties. I mean, I, I'm a fan of musical artists. Mm-hmm. I'm not that much of a fan. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't get it. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a. You know. I'm it's, not a beehive type of Swiftie. Person. You're not they're a Swiftie. Yeah. They're called yeah. Swifties. I'm not yeah. a Swiftie. I'm not a, a, a beehive with Beyonce. I like her music, but I'm not that. You know. Not that invested. No. No. Not at all. No. But what about Usher? He's now, a halftime performer. Yeah, I think I think he's going to do a great job. Actually, mm-hmm. what do you think? I think Usher. I I wanted to go to Usher's residency. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> I wanted to be there, but I haven't made it yet. But, but is Usher enough to make you want to be invested in the Super Bowl? Well, Usher's not a prince, but we'll talk about that later. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, he did sell he those ticket prices for his Usher residency were pretty high. Not as high as the NFL Super Bowl tickets. Right. But everyone that went to his show had great things to say about it. Even some of our friends that went to his residency, they said they were nosebleeds, but they still had a great time. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, he's 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 a great performer. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can he can sing, he can dance, he can roller skate. You know, right. he, <laughs> not, not the roller skate. Yes, he, that's he, on my bucket list. He's <laughs> he's he's a great performer. So, I'm sure uh, the people enjoyed it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And being it's in Vegas, it, it's a great segue for him. And I think that yeah. even just the, this residency has been something for the pinnacle of his career. So I don't want to discredit Usher. He definitely earned his spotlight for this. Absolutely. But why do we need to keep seeing the spotlight of Taylor Swift when I'm trying to see what's going on in football? She's a fan favorite, number one. Exactly. So since she's dating a football player, you know, that's just bringing on everybody, bringing all the other fans. And I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. You know, I mean, I've heard some of her music. It's okay mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. but I'm not a, a fan, a super fan or, you know, anything like that. I mean, they're they're even like checking for what she's wearing every day. Really? Yeah. So she has become like this fashionista now, too, for them. So like, oh, I want that. I want that Travis, you know, special mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey jacket that was made just for her so so i have the cnn app on my phone Mm -hmm. and every time i see that taylor (laughs) i get upset i'm like who needs to know this i I really do i get upset because i'm just sick of and it's it's no offense to her i'm just every little thing she does it's news yep that's what i do not like about celebrity news and entertainment and tmz and whoever because every little thing that someone does Boom. It's, it's awesome. posted. Yeah, I know about it. It's posted. When does it ever stop? It doesn't. It doesn't because business goes on forever. And for the NFL, Taylor is a great business move. Well, yes. obviously, if she's uh, she made the brought in that, that type of money. Yeah. 331. 331. Haven't there been statistics about um, lower engagement about Super Bowls in the past years? Um, I think so. Yeah. So, so you know. this is... This is another reason why we think the NFL is rigged. Because they're trying to get their ratings up. No? I mean, you have to do what you have to do. Exactly. You know, that's that's the way I see it. And that's all marketing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all marketing. So, uh, at the beginning of this segment, I was like, he's no Prince. See, because Prince had the mm-hmm. baddest Super Bowl halftime show, in my view. Okay. That I don't know. How do you feel about that? Wisconsin. I have to think about who was my favorite, though. I am it's Prince, hands down. I like it. He answered for you. It's Prince. It's Prince. Hands down. He, hands thanks, down. Thanks, thanks. Prince he, he let me know that it's Prince. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about who my my favorite performer was. Wisconsin, close to Minnesota. Uh-huh. It's Prince. <laughs> <laughs> it's color purple. Exactly. Yes, it's, it's Prince. Prince. No choice. It's Prince, no doubt. Okay. So, unfortunately, I can't be there, but I will watch uh, Usher do his thing. But last year. Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut it down. Yeah, Eminem. Mm-hmm. 
I'm missing one. Who are Kendrick Lamar? That was an awesome show. Mm -hmm. That was a really, really great show. And everybody, I didn't hear anything bad about it, actually. I like the variety. Yeah. The variety was definitely there. Mm -hmm. Right. So So you don't like Eminem either. I mean, he's from Detroit, but you don't don't like anything Detroit, right? (laughs) No, that's not true. Oh, that's not true. Oh, okay. I just I'm just not a Lions fan. You're just fan. not a Lions no, fan. No, I'm not a Lions fan. Okay. Are you I love I love my Detroit peeps. I love okay. the 313. Okay, but you're going <laughs> but you going you going to represent those cheese heads all day. Yes, when it comes to football, it's go pack go all day. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Doug Sims anybody. live hanging out with Rachel and Jane Steele and you know what? They have this thing that they want to talk about. <laughs> spinning the block. I need to know what this is about. <laughs> what is spinning the block? Talk to me. Spinning the block is um, running it back one more time with your ex. Gotcha. Are you spinning the block, Rachel? Oh, snap. Am I? Well, that's real direct. Um, I am currently not. Have I ever? Have you? Um, we're going to talk about me. I'm a hard cut off person, but... You know, we've seen YG and Saweetie. We have the quintessential couple of Ben and Jen coming back after, what, 20 years? And yeah, then getting married. Years. And then they're that? officially married now. Yeah. Uh, I won't forgive them for Geely, but that's another thing. <laughs> and let's see, who else? Oh, we got Ashanti and Nelly. Now, this is one that I've been waiting for. I'm, I'm paying attention to other people's relationships, but... All the memes that say, you know, if you don't make me this happy after we reunite, then it's not even worth it. Because all you see is them two grinning all up and down yes. the world. Yes. Living their best lives back together. So I'm I'm happy that. But spinning like the it. block just might not be my thing. Have um, you spun the block? <laughs> well, I'm married. On two so. wheels? <laughs> <laughs> not the two wheels. <laughs> Hit those corners kind of quick. Ooh. <laughs> Well, I would say that I tried to spin the block and then it just failed again. So. You initiated or he did? Um, I think he did because he was in the wrong in the first place. Oh, so did you guys officially break up and then like you started talking again or you had already continued conversations? No, we never like, it was, it was broke. We officially broke up, but we were still talking about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Spinning the block it is. Spin the block. Mm. So, so uh, Nelly and Ashante. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. That's all I'm saying. So they're with child. Is that correct? Are they? I, yes. I don't know. That was that was that was a that was a rumor, and then yeah. like everyone's still trying to figure it out. Okay. But you know, everybody's really big on hiding pregnancies. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah. Because. Uh, but I don't. I don't blame. Superstars. I mean, have that little bit of joy and that privacy and something that's for you and, and your spouse. Yeah, because Hallie did that. She, did. she hid her entire pregnancy and then popped out and was like, hey, we had a baby. We had a baby. But I feel like she asked with us um, and then now wants to spin the block on giving us the news, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think celebrities are entitled to their privacy, too, and just to enjoy their moment to themselves. Mm. So. Doug Sims Live. So we were off air talking about the Grammys and Victoria Monet and mm-hmm. SZA and Victoria Monet. She's up for like eight Grammys. Is she? Congratulations. Yeah, somewhere in that arena. Yeah. Congrats. But Congrats. I want to see her perform. Is she performing? I hope so. We got so SZA. I'm hoping she wins a bunch of Grammys because mm-hmm. I know her drummer. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. Give us tea. Look at it. Okay, okay. So ho- hopefully she'll come out on top and, you know, and keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah, because that is, that is a nice uh, song. I, I've seen it and I play it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen her perform it on one of the talk shows, maybe D- Jimmy Fallon maybe, or one of those mm-hmm. late night talk shows. And, hey, she did her thing. Mm-hmm. I well think deserved. that song has brought her to her year. So let's, let's give her the pinnacle. Yes. I'm excited to see SZA perform. Mm-hmm. I just like to see variety. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I do love SZA's toxic ways. Ooh. Toxic ways. <laughs> oh, you know her toxic music. What, tell you us know, how you identify. There's, there's yeah. a couple toxic, you know, lines in her. Mm-hmm. 
But I like I like her music. I really do. But her, her album is pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Her, yeah. The full album is great. So so my son was was talking about uh, the Kill Bill song. I'm like Kill Bill. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then it grew on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then the snooze, I was like, oh, oh yeah. I like that joint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, That's a, a great one. Yeah, she's got hits. I love it. So so who's your 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 favorite new artist, if you will? New? How new are we going? Oh, we'll go a year, um, two years, two years. Oh yeah, uh, you know what? I'm I'm still old school. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I want to see people that recycle. I want to see like a Janelle Monae. Um, oh well, she I she guess, she's in there somewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because she's yeah, cause uh. She, she had an album, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that Is lipstick she? lover and, and yes, all of that yeah, good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she's relevant right about now. Yeah, yeah. Any um, any males you want to add? Ooh, we got male side. I mean, there was who was there this year? There was a lot of males, wasn't there? Eric Bellinger's he's not mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right. I don't know that he's Chris Brown. Chris Brown dropped Breezy. a lot of music. Okay, Is sensational. He sensational. Is he? That's so so. Since we, since you brought up Chris Brown, mm-hmm. I think that Chris Brown is one of the best R and B performers uh, today. Of his, yeah, of this time. Yeah, I highly agree. I, I don't think anybody can touch him right now. I really don't. Now he's he's people are trying to compare him to Michael Jackson. No comparison. No, no, right? there's no, no comparison. But for his era, yes. he's that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dancing, right music, true. whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he has hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. Absolutely. Features, since Run It. Genre. You know? And his, and his concerts are, they so, are eventful. Ooh. Eventful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, eventful. Yeah, it was it was definitely fun and entertaining. Like, I did not sit down in my seat when I went to Chris Brown. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you, so what, I'm, what I'm gathering here is that you ladies travel and you go to a lot of concerts so with that being said best concert that you've seen thus far oh. well for me I am a definitely a um, you know the older R&B so music soul child seeing him perform live was definitely one of my mm-hmm. favorites because he I like know every song like <laughs> every single song so that was a great experience and he was a, he was only on stage for like 30, 45 minutes. So it wasn't long enough for me, but we did get to experience <laughs> Kem. And um, I got his book. Yes, she got a signed book. <laughs> okay, Kem. awesome, yeah. awesome. We were what, like second, third row? Second yeah. row. Y'all when just they on came stage to Grand Rapids. Yeah, yeah. We were on oh, stage. Great, yeah. great experience. So, so let, me, let me ask you this then. Kim in Grand Rapids on stage. Mm-hmm. Now, one of my favorite artists, independent artists, would be Eric Roberson. Are you guys familiar with Eric yes. Roberson? Now, Eric Roberson, I met him. Okay. Had a chance to talk with him. And great guy, listen to his music, follow him, whatever the case is. And But he's just so, to me, he's awesome. I mean, he's a number one independent artist, meaning he doesn't, uh, he's not signed to a major record label. That's awesome. But he works with everybody. You mentioned Music Soul Child. Mm-hmm. He has worked with him, written music for him. Um... He's worked with Layla Hathaway. He's worked with DJ Jazzy Jeff. You name it. He's worked. Are you guys familiar with Zoe? No. No. Uh oh. Oh, let me turn He's, the mics off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's about, he about to turn on some music. I need something to add to my playlist. So, Zoe, so I have a show called Liquid Lounge Radio, mm-hmm. right? And what I play on that show, so Zoe, let me go back to Zoe first. Zoe is straight out of Detroit. Okay. But Zoe is a major music producer, writer, right out of Detroit. Okay, cool. You name it, he's worked with him. I'm talking TV, television, so forth, so on. Stokely Williams. Oh, Ooh. wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Eric Robeson. <laughs> you name him, he's worked with him. That's my vibe. Yeah. And But so he plays the type of music that's it's soul, R&B soul, but it's not conventional in the sense of getting so much airplay mm-hmm. okay. you know 
Yeah. It's, it's not just like a ready-made. Ooh, so we mentioned Chris Brown. Every time you turn on the radio, you're hearing the Chris, Chris Brown, Brown song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not like that. But there, there's a, a select group of people that I would put in his genre, if you will. Music Soul Child would fit in there. Okay. Uh, him, Stokely. Mm-hmm. So if you think about people like that, Cy Smith, okay. um, Foreign Exchange. Yes. Okay. Uh, she's like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm foreign, ex- foreign exchange and the Bonte, who's from North Carolina, who is a part of a group called Little Brother, but he's also the main guy. Him and and um, Nicolay are with Foreign Exchange, so he's a dual entity in two different groups. Okay. So, but anyway, mm-hmm. if you think of Stokely, you think of Zoe, you think of Cy Smith, you think of Music Soul Child, mm-hmm. you think of Eric Robeson, mm-hmm. you think of Jill Scott. Yeah. All in that vein mm-hmm. is what Zoe does right out of Detroit. And we don't hear enough about it. You know, that's why you got to listen to the Liquid Lounge radio show because I play all of those people. Yep. Yeah. And the snaps up like she just did. Yep. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I, I do the radio. In the car. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's the most... It's the most outstanding music, and I have a, a deep appreciation for it. So when I was overseas, I was mm-hmm. overseas for three years, and the people in Germany, they actually love super soul music. Really? Love really? it. L- love it. And their beats are so infectious, if you will, mm-hmm. that when you hear those type of tones, you're just drawn to it. Mm-hmm. And those, the music soul child, when he first came out, I was like, who is this right. dude? <laughs> you know? Like, right. Wow. And that's that good music that takes you back to a whole era of life and memories. Right. Where was I when this song came out? So I'm yeah. excited to explore that category. Yeah, right. I, I definitely, this week, I I was listening to like a playlist, um, uh, High Five. Okay. High oh, yeah, five. yeah, definitely. So they there was a song um, called, can I say, I think? And I was like, oh, I forgot about this mm-hmm. song. And so it's been on repeat, like, all week. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, this brings me back to a happy place. Right. And that's just what, like, music does for me. I'm like, it takes me back to some happy oh, moments yeah. and happy times. And just that feeling. Or sad. See, you talk about high five. So I met those guys when they first started Ooh. in Texas. I was in Texas mm-hmm. for 18 years. So I met them in Texas. And come to find out, after I met him, my favorite producer actually produced him. Oh, wow. Teddy Riley. Teddy oh. Riley, yeah. Teddy Riley. So. Wow. <laughs> Teddy <laughs> Riley. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So, so yeah, that type. So I was just listening to um, um, one of the uh, High Five songs. Look, I can't even call what it. What is it? It's 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 the uh, uh, um. Uh, you said what? So the the one I was listening to, Tony Thompson wasn't singing it. It wasn't Tony Thompson. It was the other guy that was singing Quality Time. Yeah, yeah. So I was listening to that one. And (laughs) I'm telling you, like people are like, how? Wait, how do you even know this song (laughs) exists? Because I had the album on tape. On tape, on cassette, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think they had the lyrics in the, in the yeah, in the, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. I remember that. I was like, <laughs> I loved it. So, Our so, era was so dope. now we we went off topic just a little bit yeah. because we were trying to figure out who we wanted to see at the Grammy. Oh yeah. yeah. So, and you came new up with artist. new artists. Yeah, I I just haven't found a new artist that I'm like totally in love or obsessed with, but I do love I love SZA, and I know she's not totally new, but mm-hmm. like, I I do love her music. And like I feel like I can listen to her album through. Okay. And now I, I, I like Lucky Day. Oh, Lucky yes. Day. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 He Lucky Day. He's he's pretty too. smooth. Yes. Yeah. And, and Ella, it kind of fits in that genre. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then Ella May Ella has May. been on my rotation okay. for a long time, and we went to her concert. Oh my good. goodness! You guys are everywhere. <laughs> we just enjoy it. I need a buddy pass to like hang out with you guys. <laughs> you guys are freaking everywhere. That was a birthday gift. <laughs> It was a, oh, yeah. I got a birthday gift for my husband and then I gifted it to her. I gifted her a ticket to go with me. Now, yes. where'd you, where'd you catch me, catch her at? Uh, Detroit. In yeah. the D. Yep. At the, at the Fox. At the, at the Fox. Fox. At the Fox. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful venue. Many stories. So I mm-hmm. caught Trey songs at the Fox. Okay. Oh. She said, oh. <laughs> so, so, um, 
Here's that's that's my celebrity wife right there, right? Okay. Yeah, that's my celebrity <laughs> wife. Okay. And I got, I got she messed around and let me husband. hug her. Oh. Yes, she did. You didn't let go. I tried not to, you but out? I had to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I kept my composure. Oh, they, I, I on kept the my outside. composure. You melted. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that picture, I have it somewhere. I do have it, okay. but it, it will be framed up in this office somewhere. That's okay. what celebrity. Everybody has one. You got a celebrity husband, celebrity, you know, something. Look, she said, you already Ooh. know who mine is. So. <laughs> I, who's mine? Huh? Mine is Lorenz Tate. Thank you. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> All day. I met him too. Hey. Him Ooh. and his brother. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Sure. They're always in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's where yeah. they're from, so. Yeah, I'm obsessed with Lorenz Tate. I will send her, I will send her like pictures of Lorenz Tate when they pop up on my feed. <laughs> so I, I have, so I met Lorenz Tate, his brother, and that's a shame. He just, his name just escaped me. All at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, boys, that. boys in the hood. Um, Come on. Uh, what? Boys I, in the hood. Boys in the hood. Boys in yeah. the hood. Um, uh, the main character. Uh, more shit. No, 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 Ricky. Ricky. You know, poor Ricky, the best man, the best man, the football player. I can't think of his name right now. Yeah, isn't that more stressful? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, you know, your like, voice was so low. I didn't catch it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait, who else? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I have a picture with all those guys together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. Yeah, we're off topic, but hey, we're on topic at That's the same okay. time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. So you guys are everywhere meeting folks and <laughs> we love it. Okay. Apparently you are too. Yeah, I right. hey. You know everybody. We try to get in your Innocence. pictures. Innocence. We try to get Combined. in your pictures too. <laughs> so look, 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 look. I'm gonna stop this right now. We I'll figure a breaking point for that one. <laughs> Doug Sims Live. Hey, we had a blast here hanging out. I had a blast here hanging out with Rachel and Jane. Uh, they made my day today. We had some great discussions going on. And uh, how you guys feel? We feel great. feel great. We had such a good time. And we're so uh, definitely blessed to connect with you. Yeah, it was a great time. We had some some tea on the line. Yeah. <laughs> some therapy, maybe. Right, right, yes. right, right. And, I'm just feeling pumped up. It was okay. a great experience. Thanks for having us. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I definitely look forward to seeing you guys again and having great conversations. Yes. And uh, carrying it on. We'll yeah. be back. More to come. More to come. Yes. I like that. Yes. More, more to come. With, with that being said, more to come. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Mm-hmm.